name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A welcome to the parish of Lexton, to our church of St. Leonard. Welcome to those who are gathered here. Welcome to those who are gathered online. And an especially, especially warm welcome if you're joining us uh, for the first time. We shall still ourselves for a moment and then say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly honor you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. The brothers and sisters in God's family who come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Most merciful God, Father and Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to remain what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We say together the glory in its justice. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your good, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son and the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your Spirit, and kindle in all who minister the Gospel your countless gifts of grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we hear from the Scripture. The first reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 2. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking through me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their, their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Whether they 
they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. They shall know that there has been a prophet among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, speak to God. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but not on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. If you're comfortable too, would you please stand for the Holy Gospel? The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honour except in their own town, and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out about the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do please sit down. my transmitter out of my pocket because I think that is the issue this morning. So if I get too excited, it may end up sort of being thrown at you. Sorry. Um, Tuesday evening brought me a great joy for several reasons, but you may be shocked to learn that my greatest joy on Tuesday was nothing to do with England's triumph over Germany in the football. It was something else, truly. In fact, I watched the end uh, of the football in a car park in a very rainy Norwich to considerable confusion with some clergy who were pulling up in cars next to me. And I was in the distant north of Norfolk um, to celebrate the start of a new ministry uh, because my dear friend Graham was being installed to a new group of parishes. Excuse me. Uh, now this is, as I've said many times, a time of great uh, pressure, financial and otherwise, on the Church of England and its structures and change is in the air. And in a sign of these times, um, Graham is licensed as a team vicar designate to a team ministry that doesn't actually exist yet, or as the Order of Service brilliantly put it, it is hoped to come into being soon. It's clearly going to be a very large team of parishes, uh, because it turned out that almost everybody else at the service was a church warden. Um, I'm sure that the gathering together of those parishes is not as simple as it seemed on Tuesday, but, but there was true hope and optimism in the air, and it was delightful. And it was nothing to do with the football, because I was the only one who was interested in the football. It was delight and optimism at Graham, and what God is doing there. And at the end of the service, Graham led the prayers and gave the notices as his first act in this new role. Now in a previous role I've heard many of these notices and prayers given and sometimes I try to discreetly roll my eyes. But what Graham said in his notices is what filled me with the greatest joy on Tuesday. And this is what he said. Two clauses, one sentence. I'm not here to be your saviour, but I can promise to love and serve you and those in these parishes. I'm not here to be your saviour, but I will love and serve. That is something that all Christians should proclaim. But we're often tempted to act as if we are our own saviours, or as though some other individual um, will be the saviour of a group or a community or, or a church. The world says uh, you can be what you want to be. You have the power to fix all problems. Be the hero, the fixer, the inspiration. But we are capable of great and good things as human beings, yes. But each of us is flawed and at times fragile, and we go through seasons when we will be aware of our weakness. And we just can't control all that is about us. We can't forge our own destiny. We live in a time and a place with its own joys and its own problems, and we have no absolute power over those things. Now the truth is, we can and should often address problems in ourselves and around us. But we can't ever do that perfectly, perfectly. And if we fall into believing that that sort of power is ours, then when we feel fragile, when our projects or dreams turn out different to how we hoped, we become crushed, overcome with guilt. We crush ourselves with disappointment when we falsely raise ourselves to the status of saviour, as though we have the absolute power to fix it all. But the world actually has got a saviour, and a perfect saviour, and his name is Jesus Christ, and he won't let us down, because he has already taken every human frailty 
and weakness to the cross for us. Now in that slightly odd passage from 2 Corinthians, Paul is alluding to some sort of debilitating illness that he had. And he calls it his thorn in the flesh and writes it in a vision. Jesus responds to his pleadings uh, about, about this with these words, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. Or in some other versions, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul, being a passionate man, responds gushingly, so I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me, for whenever I weep, then I am strong. Paul is teaching us that when we face our frailties and weaknesses, we have this opportunity to learn as he did to better rely on Jesus' grace, the precious free gift. Jesus' strength can shine through our weakness. But we need to accept that we cannot save ourselves so that we can throw ourselves onto his mercy fix our eyes on our Saviour and on his power and on his strength. And in particular, if you want to see that, look on him on the cross. There's a powerful depiction of this about 30 foot behind me. That is great failure and weakness by the world's standards. That is when the awesome power of God was shown to be triumphant. Power. Not hard power, military power, um, rhetorical power, God's power, made perfect in human weakness. And a power that even death and sin cannot overcome. So it seems to me that Paul um, accepts his, his illness, and he accepts it as something that makes space for God's power and strength. He doesn't relish it. He doesn't obsess about his weakness. He doesn't desire the weakness. He doesn't desire his illness. But he does allow it to focus him on Christ's mercy. Uh, Paul is very often a quite confident and argumentative man. But he is always absolutely clear who his saviour is. I mean, the fact that people around the Mediterranean seem to have been jumping to attention when he made suggestions to him means it would have been the easiest thing possible to set himself up as a little Caesar, come up with a little set. But Paul is clear that there is one Saviour, and it's not him, and it's not you, and it's not me, it is Jesus Christ. And that is wonderful because if we pay attention to Jesus, to Jesus' words and his life, we can show people around us what salvation means and what his power might mean for people. We can each love and serve, yes, in our flawed ways, but nevertheless we can each love and serve in all contexts. And remember that even those first 12 apostles sent out by Jesus in our gospel reading did not meet with immediate universal success. In fact, that passage is partly about Jesus preparing them for mixed uh, results. They were not greeted as heroes to every, at every new village. No one sent out in Christ's name is ever 100% successful. And no one sent out in Christ's name is a saviour. But through love and service, they might just point to our Saviour. And through our love and service, we might just point the world to our Saviour, Jesus. So the challenge is that we must avoid falling into believing we are our own saviours. Whether we think we can save ourselves or our church or our family or our community, we actually will eventually buckle under unrealistic expectations. And the reason we buckle is because if we think we've got this as individuals, we're not leaving space 
for God, for Jesus to get this. And in these days where hope and anticipation mix with anxiety and uncertainty, we need to keep reminding each other, sister, brother, you cannot save yourself, but you are never alone. No one is self-sufficient. When we find ourselves in difficult places, perhaps we feel shame or dislike ourselves, or we're experiencing depression or mourning or illness, we must reach out. Reach out to Christ in prayer, and also receive Christ's grace through the professionals and friends around us. If you are struggling, if you are struggling, don't try to stand alone. Seek help. That is what your Saviour wants for you, not to stand alone. Seek help. So thank you, Graham. He's not here to be my Saviour or yours, but he can love and serve us. We're not here to be our own saviors, but we can love and serve. So let's love and serve, keeping focused on Jesus our Saviour, so that any fragility or weakness we experience, and we will experience it from time to time, will become an opportunity for his saving power to be better known in us and through us. Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for you. My free gift is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Open your heart to him and he will embrace you as your saviour. So as we remain seated, we affirm our faith in the God of our salvation. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, you promise through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Heavenly Father, give us the ears to hear, minds to understand, and the willingness to respond and act from what we have heard. Grant us patience as 
as we wait for your future and comfort in the knowledge that your presence is with us always and that your voice can break through even the darkest moments. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Father, we pray for all those who minister and preach that they may never find themselves rejected as our Saviour Jesus Christ was in his hometown. Help us to respect the beliefs of others, even if we do not share them, to celebrate what we have in common and accept our differences. Guide us as we live each day, determined to spread the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for the worldwide church and for the congregation here at St. Helens, asking for your help to grow in faith. We thank you that we were able to celebrate the confirmation of Nick, Nick and Dan here on Monday night and pray that their faith will continue to flourish with the help and support of those around them. We pray for Julie and Roger, our bishops, Matt and his family, and for all the ministry team who do so much for us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Creator God, look with compassion upon our world and the whole human family. Take away arrogance and hatred that infects the hearts of those who pursue violence and terrorism. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and peace. We pray for peacemakers throughout the world. May they bring hope out of despair, peace out of conflict, and prosperity out of poverty. Lord, in your mercy, we Father God, we pray for our families and friends, and especially for our, our young people, that they may grow up knowing love and hope, valuing life and respecting others. We pray for those who are about to leave school or college and move on to the next stage of their lives, and for those for whom what happens next depends on exams or assessment forms. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Jesus, our leader, we pray for all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and for those who care for them. Grant them strength in their weakness, comfort in their sorrow, peace of mind in their anxiety, and the renewed hope for life which only your presence and power can bring. We pray especially for those who have asked our prayers, for Mary, Ashley, Jill, David, Jan, Tony, Shirley, Stella, Doreen, Betty, Jane, Sheila, Carol, Joan, Graham, Tim, Holly, Tony, Margaret, Jasmine, we, Frida and Dennis, Jean, Roy, John, John, Hilary, Ellen, Pam, Florence, Erin, Angus, Chris, Derek, Rosemary, and Doug. In the moment of silence, we also bring to you those whom we love and worry about, and those known only to you. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who have died and whose anniversaries we remember at this time. Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. We pray especially for Maureen Yates, Teddy March, Frankie Lebov, 
Graham Brown, Robin Twig, Rodney Young, and all others known to us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. Lord, be present among us this morning and may the transforming power of your Spirit work in us and through us today and throughout the coming week. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Leonard and all your saints, we commend ourselves to all whom we love, those who love us, and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept this for us, for the sake of your sons, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's an excellent tradition on the first Sunday of the month we uh, pray for those who have been uh, baptised here in this community uh, over the last uh, five or so years. But today we also get to pray for somebody who was baptised this week and it was a real delight. I can't emphasise that enough to be here and witness the lead bishop uh, confirming uh, Nick and uh, Mick and Dan and uh, Nick, you were also baptised. Now, babies are not able to object to this, but I'm not going to give you the chance to object. We're going to give you a round of applause. I'm going to ask you to stand up and we're going to show our love for you and our delight in your baptism and confirmation and the confirmation of Nick and Dan by giving you a round of applause. <laughs> So let's, let's pray in thanksgiving. Father, we thank you for the exquisite gift of baptism into your name. And we thank you for the great gift of those who honour this community by receiving that sacrament amongst us. And so, delighting in uh, Monday's confirmation and in uh, Nick and Dan and Nick. We pray also for those who have been baptised this time of year over the past few years. And for Joshua, Sophie, Lulu, Olivia, Freddie, Andrew, Lewis, Alfie, Theo, John and Kate. And we ask your blessing on them as they continue to walk the way of faith. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I think we're pretty used to how uh, the distribution of uh, communion works these days. I feel I should point out that the, um, the hand gel pump we have in front is a really good example of the grace of God overflowing that, that I've learned to my cost, unless you want the host to taste like whatever is in that stuff. <laughs> Just press it down uh, a, a, a little bit. You're comfortable too. Would you please stand for the peace? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a distant sign of peace. Please believe me. Please be with me. Please be with me. Do please sit as the table is prepared. <laughs>
may have seen that this Sunday has been advertised as a Thanksgiving uh, Sunday. And of course, we have a Eucharist every Sunday here. We always uh, give thanks. But um, as we pray the Eucharistic prayer together, this great prayer of Thanksgiving, I invite us all uh, to think of those people, actually those institutions uh, that have helped us over this last 16 months uh, and, and pray for them uh, as well. When we come to the Eucharistic prayer, I will invite you, if you're comfortable to, to stand. Uh, but sincerely, uh, if you are more comfortable to remain seated, please feel absolutely free uh, to do so. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here with the Spirit of Israel. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death, and so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord, 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the house. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine now poured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, he gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Leonard, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father. Who art in heaven, and I be in thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us the trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for thy life. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one Lord, because we all share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. For those who aren't able to receive the sacrament here, uh, please do say the prayer of spiritual uh, communion as we receive and confide in, in the order of service.
of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governments that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. A few uh, notices. Uh, our colleague uh, Maggie is presiding at uh, St. Seds in uh, Shrub End uh, today. Uh, this Wednesday morning at 9.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m., uh, we're trialling a, a Wednesday uh, midweek uh, service. Here it will run very much as the Sunday service does, and uh, you'll need to register, please, in the same manner that you do for this service. There are details uh, in last week's uh, email. So it'll be 9.30 um, here. Uh, I want to say congratulations to... Alex Ramsey, who has uh, successfully completed the course in Christian uh, Studies and he will be uh, receiving his uh, certificate and um, uh, the applause of many, uh, I think on Wednesday night, at roughly the same time as the semi-final. I know this because I once preached at that service during the World Cup semi-final and I made the right choice to go to the service and preach because England lost. <laughs> no, I mustn't be too uh, jovial. I, I just want to sort of um, give you a, a flavour of the thinking about what may or may not happen towards the end of this uh, uh, month. We will discover, I think, a little bit more, hopefully through Parliament, but probably through Robert Peston and the Sun, about what is going to happen. Now, uh, if there is a change on the 19th of, of July, that will be accompanied by a legislation that often is published afterwards, and then the church's interpretation of, of those things. So everything we're planning at the moment, of course, is according to the way things are at the moment, and we will take it week by week and see what we can do. But with every change comes a change to rotors and significantly a change of the pressures on what wonderful lay people here do uh, to uh, support us. So I'm full of hope and excitement, but personally I would expect that the end of this month, the 25th of, of July, will probably run very much like this uh, service is. Please keep praying uh, for our community. Uh, it is spreading, the Delta variant is spreading very rapidly through our schools. They need our prayer, whether they've got it or whether their year groups are having to go out in the bubbles or have to, to go out in, in isolation. We must continue to uh, be as sensible as we can and really pray for people who've had 16 months of pressure and then a little bit extra pressure on top of that. Uh, they can't be their own saviour, we can't be their saviours, but we can love and serve and serve our Saviour Jesus. You're comfortable too. Would you please uh, stand for the final blessing? Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life on the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.